Hello and welcome to Irish Football Fan TV. We're here with the opposition preview. It's Nigeria versus the Republic of Ireland. A uh, huge game for Nigeria more so than the Republic of Ireland, but it is a chance to uh, regain a bit of pride and end the competition on a bit of a high, considering we are already out. I'm joined by IOT from home of Nigerian football. Um, firstly, Ayo, how are you? I'm good. I'm good, Paul. How are you doing? I'm good, thanks. Uh, I'm delighted to have you on to give us a bit of a lowdown on the Nigerian team. And I suppose just usually what I do when I get people like yourself on and we're chatting away or whatever, uh, just to kind of explain what you do um, in terms of Nigerian football. So anyone listening uh, might be able to go and check you out and where uh, you can be found as well in terms of your socials and stuff. Oh, yeah. Um, thanks for having me on your show, Paul. Um, I'm IoT, the founder of Eagle Strike at the home of Nigeria football. Um, I'm a sports marketer, content creator, um, promote Nigerian footballers as much as we can, work you know, hand in hand with a lot of Nigerian footballers as well on their branding, social media, um, sponsorships, and just making sure that you know the world sees Nigerian footballers as much as possible. Um, I, just, I just love the game so much. I love my country so much. And uh, you know, we're doing the best job that we can to keep us in, in global view. Well, that's brilliant, and I'm sure they, they really appreciate having someone like that, uh, yourself, uh, representing them as well. Um, and obviously, I've, I was checking out your Twitter and stuff like that, because we are always looking to collaborate with different countries on, you know, talking about their teams and stuff like that. So when I saw your page, I was like, I have to get them on. And I know I only contacted you yesterday, and we had a couple of technical difficulties and stuff like that, but here we are now. Um, so yeah, we're going to get you to give us the lowdown on the Nigerian women's national team. Um you know the first game nil nil against canada and then yeah. the three two win against australia i mean we've obviously struggled in games against the two we've played the two as well and um, the only team ireland haven't faced so far is nigeria but i suppose from your point of view talk us through uh, those two games and and your thoughts generally on uh, on the world cup so far um yeah i'll start from saying that honestly it's been a fine 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 world cup for us so far um it's only two games in, you know, we still have a lot of tournament left to play, but a lot of Nigerians are already pleased with how the ladies have performed. Um, you know, the, the Nigerian women's team is a team that unfortunately is not as followed as the men's team. And a lot of people just did not have um, that much faith in them. It's really going into this group that was labeled the group of death, you know, against um, Canada, Australia and Ireland. Um, rather, yeah. And, you know, it, it's just been um, good for us so far. In the first game against Canada, we were very compact, you know, um, almost packed the bus, you know, I, I will say for that game. But um, from the coach's perspective, it was the respect that we had to pay to, you know, potentially one of the tougher sides in, in the group, you know, and we showed um, our defensive coordination in that game, you know, unfortunately, considering a penalty, but Shama Canadozier um, came up strong, you know, I've always held the opinion that she's one of the best goalkeepers in women's football, you know, no matter how you look at it. Um, and I'm happy that she was able to prove herself at only 22 years old, you know, um, saving a penalty from the legend, Kristen Sinclair you know, and, and making some other fine saves in the game to, to keep us in that match. You know, getting that draw against Canada gave the team a lot of confidence, you know, and helped them understand that, you know what, we can actually compete against some of these tough, you know, very difficult national teams. And um, obviously, you know, getting two of our best players in Rashida Tajibade and Halimatwa in day back, you know, for the second game, they missed out the first game due to suspension. Um, getting them back for the second game was a huge, huge plus for us. It allowed our attacking um, players to be able to play with some more freedom, knowing that, you know, the experience, you know, in midfield of Ayinde was there to protect them. Um, and of course, Rashida Tajibade is one of our best players. You know, she's 23 years old. She's a fine, fine forward, you know, dribbles so well with the ball, creates chances, and she works hard, you know, even coming back and helping the team in defense. Um, so I wasn't too surprised that we're able to create a few more chances against Australia. You know, frankly, um, before the game, I, I had my own predictions on my show. I, I didn't necessarily think we would score three goals. I thought we would score two, you know, but of course, very happy to see that we're able to score three goals against the Australian side. Um, considered the late header, you know, towards the end of the game, but but, you know, it's one of those things in football. You know, you might have the game in control and then it gets into the last five, ten minutes of the game and all of a sudden you're just under the course. You're having so much pressure on you. Um, but I, I think it's been a fantastic performance for, um, from the ladies so far. You know, happy that Asisa Toshuala was able to get her goal as well. You know, becoming the first African player to score three um, three World Cups. You know, it, it's it's just been a fantastic one for us. Um, while, while enjoying the moment so far, you know, going into this game against Ireland, uh, we can't take anything for granted. We have an opportunity to potentially top our group. Um, so that's something that we have to go all out for and, you know, try, try to make history. It would it would be the first time that Nigeria finished some of their group at the Women's World Cup. So it would be it would be a fine one for us if we can get that done. 
Yeah, well, you know, from our point of view, we'll we'll obviously be trying to stop you from from winning, um, just to purely regain a bit of pride. I mean, we thought coming into the World Cup for the ter- first two games that it was going to be, you know, Ireland may be able to shock um, Australia and Canada, and that they were going to be the two teams that Ireland really had to kind of focus on, and, and Nigeria was going to be the game that we were going to try and win. But it seems to be the opposite case now, where Nigeria have have, have probably outperformed the rest of the teams um, especially beating the host nation in Australia and probably shocking them as well good result against Canada um, we, from an Irish point of view we frustrated the two teams but we just were ultimately weren't able to capitalise and probably missing that firepower up front to try and get the goals I mean we got the goal through Katie McCabe straight from a corner she had an excellent performance against Canada but we didn't have anything else to, to add to that and I think um if if we, if teams keep KD quiet, we don't really have another option of, of we don't have an out and out goal scorer who's Denise O'Sullivan, Katie McCabe generally kind of score our bigger goals or else a, a set piece kind of I think that's that's always how we've kind of set up. Um and if you take that out of the team then, you know, we kind of look a little bit lost and that's kind of how things went like in the second half against Canada and the first half against Australia. But from a Nigerian point of view, who should the Irish team be fearful of um, in this game on Monday? Um, obviously, the big name that we have on our team is um, Asisa Toshwala. You know, so any team knows that they have to pay her due, due respect. You know, fantastic player, plays for Barcelona, scores, scores a ton of goals every season. Um I, I will give you give you this knowledge if you didn't have it already. She's nursing a um, you know a minor injury, you know, which is why she came off the bench against Australia and she didn't play the full ninety minutes. But she still showed that you know thirty minutes on the field and she's able to produce a goal, you know, and cause um, problems for the defense. Um, so that's money that you guys have to be worried about for sure. Um, I will also say Rashida Dajibade, um, the girl with the blue hair. You know, she, she plays from the left or the right flank and she's one of our most creative outlets. You know, she's a player that is going to... If in most of the games that we play against the, the tougher nations, if you watch our matches, um, if we were to have any kind of positive results, you know, Ajibade probably had a role to play in, in, in that performance. So I think that's another player that, you know, you have to be worried about. And um, not so much a goal threat, but somebody that I believe always has the ability to run the park for us is um, Christine Chibi. Um, she plays as a defensive midfielder, you know, kind of a box-to-box player, but she gives everything for the for the team. You know, she's very aggressive on the um, off the ball. You know, she's going to be putting a lot of tackles, but you know, she has this this unique ability to go in hard every time, but concede you know very few um, fouls against her. You know, she, she's very good at timing her tackles. She makes a lot of interceptions, and um, I think that that's where the um, potential threats, you know, for the Irish people will come from. Um, and just to speak again, I mean, we still have Chama Kanadozi in goal, you know, so um, another one that if you would like to score one or two goals against us, you have to make sure that you're coming with your A game because we have a top goalkeeper, you know, who's going to play and who's going to give everything to make sure that she protects she protects the goal for us. Um, I would say those are my four, I would say, most dangerous, you know, most important players for the Super Falcons at this time. And, you know, um, are you confident going into this game? You know, you've seen the way Ireland have frustrated the the other nations. I know you've scored the goals to kind of get past them and you seem to have scored the most, I think, in the group. Um, so far, you can correct me if I'm wrong on that. But um, I think, yeah, you have three goals. I think you've you, you scored the most yeah, so far. Goals, yeah, yeah obviously Australia, I think Australia have three goals as well. Okay. Because um, obviously they have to play. As well, um, oh yeah, they would yet yeah. one against uh, us and two against uh, you guys. Yeah, yeah, so um, so I think are you, are you confident against us coming in because obviously you've you've done well against the two other nations who probably probably aren't as maybe defensive as us, but are you confident that if you can break us down, that we won't um, we won't be able to to do anything in response because as I said, we we just have a, a little bit of a lack of firepower at the moment uh, up top. Um, Whereas Kira Caruso is very good at kind of harassing defenders and causing problems and being a bit of a nuisance, but maybe not so much getting the service to to score the goals because we don't really get that high up the pitch unless we're kind of like a goal down or we're, we're really pressing the opposition to try and get a goal. We, we don't tend to really um, put it up to teams. I thought we tried to do that a little bit to Canada in the first half and then when they got their goal, we just fell flat and we didn't really have another, another answer for them. But from your point of view, uh, how are you feeling going into this game? No, I mean, I, I would be wrong to not be confident, you know, given how we've performed against Canada and Australia in the first two matches. Um, it's it's very interesting because um, before the tournament, you know, if you ask most Nigerian fans, um, 
Ireland was the game that we probably say you no know, was the most winnable game. You know, most people didn't think that we could beat um, Australia. You know, even get a good result against Canada. Um, but at the same time, I always told people that in as much as we might look at the Irish as the most beatable side, I'm pretty sure that from the um, Irish side, they were looking at Nigeria as, as the most beatable side as well. You know, yeah. for them. Um, so I, I don't expect it to be easy at all for us. You know, I, I watched your opening two matches as well. I saw how difficult you made it for the Australians and for the Canadians. Um, so I think it's it's something that we have to pay you your due respect um they often say that um somebody that has nothing to lose is can be the most dangerous person in the world and at this point you know Ireland already out of the tournament so they have nothing to lose they're just going to go out there and play with their heart and play with pride and if there's one thing that we know about Irish people from all different sports you know you guys have hearts um so I'm expecting I'm expecting them to give give their all you know Kenny McCabe is a player that I, I like a lot you know and I think She's obviously going to be a threat. Um, so we're going to have to pay attention. Um, set pieces, you know, if you've watched our opening two games, you know, that's frankly an area that we haven't done our best, you know, um, in terms of defending set pieces so far. Um, we've considered quite a number of chances. I mean, Australia got their second goal from a set piece as well. And we've just we've just looked relatively shaky. Um, and I know that Kate McCabe delivers a fantastic corner. I mean, we saw the Olympic coach scored, you know, in, in the game against Canada. So it, it's definitely not going to be an easy one. Um, but based on how the ladies have performed so far, um, I would be wrong to not back them and believe that they can get a positive result. Um, I'm curious to see how the coach sets up. You know, we have um, two players um, in our defense who are on yellow cards. Um, obviously, you don't want them to get a second yellow in this game and then have to miss in, in the round of 16 if we do get through. Um, so we might make one or two changes in the squad. Um, Osnachi O'Halley, I think she got hit in the game against Australia. I think she's able to play. Um, potentially, you know, I, I don't know. We haven't heard anything about team news yet, but we might be missing um, Ayn Day in midfield. Um, who got injured in the game against Australia. So we're, we might be out one or two of our better players or one of our, our main starters. Um, so um, uh, rather, you know, not to talk down on anybody, but a fairly weakened team than what we've seen in the first two matches. Um, and again, playing against a team that has nothing to lose, it will be an interesting one, you know. Um, but I, I really believe that the ladies have shown that they have enough quality to go out there and get the three points, you know. And even if we can get the three points, I mean, they just have to pick up a draw, you know, to see us through to the next or to the next round. But I will say at this stage, you know, maybe I would rather um, try to avoid England in round of 16. So I'm really hoping that we can finish off our group, you know, and play the second place team from Group D. Yeah, well, I think you might be blessed. It's just that England have a lot of injuries now. Um, mm. So it might be a good time to actually face them if, if, if you do get past, the, obviously, the Irish team. But uh, I think the, from an Irish point of view, I think maybe Vera Powell, Although she'd be probably looking to win this game because it could potentially be her last game. Just a lot of ton yeah. contract talks and will she, won't she stay on? And um, nobody knows what's going to happen there yet. But I think uh, if you're looking at some of the some of the players, she might actually give some players a run who maybe haven't played so far in the World Cup. Like so, it'd be interesting to see maybe even her starting team for for tomorrow because a lot of the players have, uh, she's played the similar players who started games and stuff like that i know heather Payne missed out just through a hamstring tweak uh, but louise quinn played through the pain against um against uh, canada the other day so i think she might miss out and if she does miss out she'd be a huge loss because she's been absolutely amazing uh, with Neve fahey alongside her as well um anyo gorman came in for heather Payne the other day so you know was that just a tweak we'll have to come back in um she gives us a lot of legs going up and down uh, that that right hand side uh, energy and pace so yeah it's going to be interesting to see how we set up in, in that regard and you know will anybody come in in midfield will lily ag come in instead of ruish a little john um up front will amber barrett come in ahead of kira carusa it's going to be interesting to see what way we we do set up although i don't think there'll be that many changes but i think it, it's a chance maybe to bring in some new players, maybe even start our Abby Larkin or Izzy Atkinson, maybe start a left wing back and that pushes Katie McCabe further up the pitch. Who knows? So that's kind of where we're at. I think it would be interesting to see from a Nigerian point of view um, how we set up. I, I, I'd say you are kind of eagerly anticipating what way we set up. Would you say that's that's correct? No. Yeah, that, that is very correct. I'm glad, I'm glad you brought it up because I was thinking of it, you know. Yeah, I would also be interested in seeing if, like you mentioned, you know, um, she might want to give... Um, some players that haven't had minutes in the World Cup. I mean, knowing that this is your last game of the tournament, you know, yeah. it would be nice to have some players get a feel of the game. Um, so if if they do make changes in, in the Irish team, we did weaken the team, you know, necessarily. Um, I, I don't know. You would know better than myself. But um, if it's not as strong as an 11... As... Sorry, I think it depends on where uh, where 
you're talking. Jane is a mid. You know, like I think yeah. you take Katie out of that position. Although she's so brilliant going forward, she, she's so brilliant at her one on one battles and her duels. You know what I mean? Not that, not that many people get the better of her. So when you take her out of that position, you put an inexperienced player like maybe Izzy Atkinson, who she's trying to get. Um, and she was kind of a late call up to the squad and she took her chance and she's been brilliant, but she still lacks a little bit um, of that kind of the dark arts and stuff at, at the top level and maybe gets yeah. a little bit exploited uh, if Katie's not tracking back. Whereas I think if maybe she played someone like that as a left centre back in a back three and then that kind of uh, you have the protection there of a left wing back who can cover it in but then again that takes Katie's game away a little bit too so yeah I suppose it would probably uh, weaken the team if she does do that but I think it depends on the scoreline like if, if Nigeria are training up at half time I think you'll see a lot of changes in the second half and I think she will probably bring on players and just give them a couple of minutes but there's not that many that I can think of that you you throw in there and go oh well she deserved minutes you know it, basically the team that she has started with a lot of the time has been um, the best team that, that's that been available to her I do, do feel a bit sorry for Jamie Finn who you know missed out on the squad essentially um, she's kind of part of a uh, she's kind of on standby so if anybody is uh, injured yeah. she can come in but she, like she played all the games in qualifying she would have been perfect there. That right uh, wing back spot she played against Scotland, but for some reason she was she was left out. And Sinead Farrelly came in, who who has been good as well. But um, you know she was retired for six years, and then she decides to come back. Yeah. And and Jamie was was playing all the games through qualifying. So I just think that was a little bit unfair. And some of those kind of decisions have been questioned now, especially if you look at how we're out of this tournament essentially. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so it's a bit of a long winded answer, but um. Yeah, I think it would weaken the team. No, I mean, good good insight from you for sure. Um, and yeah, it would be interesting um, just also see how we set up on our side. Like I said, um, players on yellow cards. Um, naturally, I would expect the coach to want to protect them a little bit and make sure that they don't miss out on round of 16. So, you know, would expect those changes to come in. And... Um, it, it would just be nice. It would just be nice if if we if I happen to be three 0 up at halftime, you know, I'll be jumping for joy. I'm, I don't necessarily know if that's going to happen, um, but yeah, it, it would be nice to see how both teams set up. Of course, you know, it's a crucial game for us. Um, the Irish would want to go out with pride. You know, I mean, no one likes to go and lose every game of the of the tournament. Um, we've been on the, on the receiving end of that in the past um, competitions. I know it's you guys' first time, but you know. Um, I'm I'm happy to see how the Nigerian side have grown, you know, from previous years. Um, and yeah, um, hopefully we can get all we can get all three points in this game and, and and move on. It would be it would be really great for the country, you know. Um, all of a sudden, the the whole country is behind the ladies now, when very few people even cared before the tournament, you know. And like you mentioned, um, you guys have had a few um, controversies with your team selection. I mean, we've had probably the the biggest controversies you know heading into this tournament with the um, payment for the players the coach calling out the federation you know so much has happened um so that's why like against all odds you know given everything um, even as they're playing in this tournament you know the players still don't have any guarantee that they're going to get paid their bonuses um which ordinarily you know you would think that it would maybe deter them or distract them a little bit from giving their best you know but um, they're playing for the flag, you know, they're playing for, for the entire country, over 200 million people, you know, that, that want to see them do well. And they're representing really well, you know, proud of the, of the performances so far, you know, hopefully you can keep going on for as long as possible. Um, I, I'm a Nigerian fan, you know, I, I would love to dream, you know, I'd love to look far into the future and say, maybe this is the year that we finally get past the quarterfinals, you know, who knows, you know, um, right now, you know, we're walking on air, anything looks possible and, and uh, long may it continue. Yeah, I was actually going to ask you that before I finished. Was just like, what what is actually going on there now? I know um, there was talk of the Nigerians boycotting the games because of the the, the no payment, and I know the Canadians have had similar situations where they were uh, frustrated with their federation as well. You know, the the men's teams tend to get a lot better suited, whereas Ireland's actually been quite good, where they've actually done their best to promote the the national team, and they have a sponsor ahead of the men's team and stuff like that. So it just I was gonna ask you i don't want to get you into too much trouble but just kind of what, no, no, what's no, no. going on there. I, I i can't get in any trouble for that you know that that's that's the good thing um i i will tell you this the federation don't love me because i'm i'm always speaking you know about how things are not being done properly when i need to um the reality of it is that it's just not been a nice a good situation you know the coach said it um very very um poor preparation from the national team um, before the tournament started, you know, which is, again, one of the reasons why a lot of people were not having any kind of expectation, you know, for them. Um, they only played one friendly before the tournament started and it was a friendly against the second division Australian side. 
you know. Um, so we won that game 8-1, you know. Looking at it, you'll be like, of course, this this has no impact on how the tournament is going to play out. You're not going to beat anybody 8-1 at the World Cup, mm-hmm. you know. Um, and, and again, for the players, you know, I'm close to a lot of, or if not most of the players on the squad. And, you know, it was a thing of, you know, they got to Australia um, and, you know, arriving in Australia, they had the team meeting and the next thing they're hearing that they're not going to get paid their bonuses, you know. So it's, it's just a lot of things that can distract, you know, players, unfortunately. You know, I spoke to a few players even after the game against, after the win against Australia, and they still don't know if they're going to get paid their bonuses even after getting a win. You know, so it's just a really bad um, situation. You know, um, there was a document that leaked online. You know about the allocation of funds for the for the tournament. You know, and we see that people, um, technical staff, you know, um, members of the federation who are in Australia for the tournament, you know, get them paid nine hundred dollars per day that they're in Australia, whereas the players are getting paid a hundred dollars a day. You know, and it's just always interesting to see that the play, the people who are giving everything, who are you know putting their bodies on the line, you know, fighting for the nation, are uh, just more often than not, you know, getting treated the worst amongst even, you know, the people that just sit in the office. And, and I mean, I'm not saying they don't do anything, but, you know, they're not the ones that are, they're not the reason why we are where we are right now. Um, so it hasn't been the best from the Federation. You know, there's still a lot going on. Um, the players are even still hoping, even the um, promised allocation from FIFA, you know, unfortunately, it's supposed to get paid to the Federation and the Federation has to pay the players out, you know. And I was speaking to some players and they're like, hopefully I get my money the next two years. You know, because once it gets into the hands of the federation, you know, yeah, yeah, at their mercy, whenever they choose to pay you is when they pay you out. Um, you know, so it's it's not the best situation, you know. Unfortunately, that's how things are done, you know. Um, we we have a lot of people who just don't like to do the right things, really. I, I will say not to call anybody out. Um, but hopefully, you know, the players can um like they've done so far, put all that behind them. Um, at the end of the day, national pride is the most important thing um and and yeah uh, more opportunities to come for them i mean they went into this tournament having no official sponsor you know there's no you know nobody really backing them you know just going um as a team you know and and going to give their best um so it's it's an ugly situation for us um the issue of boycotting the game really i spoke to some players um they said it was it was quite overstated you know they were never really planning to boycott the game you know they all want to play at the world cup um but it was it was more so just a thing of you know they were trying to make their voices heard, you know, and they were trying to demand for what they, they felt that they deserved. Um, you know, it, it's interesting because you look at some other some other national teams, you know, and the women in other national teams sometimes are fighting for equal pay, you know. And the Nigerian players, you know, I, I spoke with um, one player on the team, you know, before this tournament started, and she's like, we're not even fighting for equal pay, we're just fighting for pay. You know, it, it's, it's, it's just a case of just pay us, you know, we're not even saying pay us as much as you do the men, just pay us. Um, and, and that's how bad situation is right now, but... Um, thankfully, it hasn't reflected on the football field. You know, everyone stayed focused and we're getting good results. Yeah, well, just hearing that, like, you kind of want Nigeria to do well. Like, if you draw, well, I'm hoping you draw with us tomorrow, not beat us. Um, if if there is a result for you guys, um, but yeah, just that's that's pretty like for them to be going through that and still producing the results they have is, is pretty spectacular i would say um yeah. but generally how i i finish these videos is i get a score prediction just to finish up with so uh i'll get your score prediction i'll give you my score prediction and uh we'll be on our way <laughs> okay um as far as my prediction for the game um i would say probably a 3-1 win for nigeria 3-1 you think you'll get three um well i think if, if it's the second half i think to go by the last day if we're as um not as organized as we were i suppose in, in the second half that could potentially happen i am hoping to go out on a high and a high isn't that high because i'm going to say a 1-1 draw so uh, i don't think we'll win but I, I i could if we take the lead i could see us maybe holding out for a draw but um i think that's enough for you guys as well you said no, yeah, a draw is enough for us to go through. And I, I would just say, you know, the reason why I, I'm picking a 3-1 win is is I, I really just believe that, you know, one, the, the Irish would come out to play, you know, a bit more, you know, given the fact that they have nothing to lose in that yeah. game. And like you said, you know, if your coach is able to make a few changes to the squad, you know, and, and that weakens the team a little bit, I think we might find some more areas to exploit. And, yeah, um, that's fair, yeah. you know, and at the same time, you know, I'm really just optimistic that ladies will will push will push up and and play a more attacking, you know, expansive style of football in this match. Um, of course, we're, we're not trying to concede too many because we don't want to like you know lose the game at the end of the day and then get knocked out even after the final results we've had so far. Um, but yeah, um, I I just 
as much as I trust our defense, you know, I always know that we have the tendency to concede a goal in any in any football match, you know, just because um, those, you know, like I mentioned earlier, the defensive set pieces sometimes aren't so great. And I know that you guys have, you know, good set pieces. Um, so that's kind of what I'm looking at, you know. Um, 3-1, I would say, is 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 my my heart. More my head would say 2-1. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, as long as we get a W, I, I really don't care what the scoreline is. Yeah, that, that's fair. Look, if I was in your position, I'd be feeling the same way and I'd be feeling a lot more optimistic than obviously I am. But listen, uh, I, it's been brilliant to have you on um, and uh, really appreciate your insight uh, into everything Nigeria there. And if we ever um, come up against Nigeria again, I'd love to have you on and collaborate again. It's been brilliant having you on. So thanks very much. Um, if you want to let people know as well where they can find you again, in case they didn't listen earlier on, you can let them know again before I let you go. Oh, yeah. Um, thanks for having me on your on your show as well, Paul. Um, really, really interesting talking to you. I've learned a lot about the Irish team as well. And, you know, if you'd like to find me, find my work um, on Twitter. We're at Eagle Striker NG. Um, we're also on Facebook, if you use Facebook, um, at Eagle Striker. And then we're on Instagram at Eagle Striker underscore NG, the home of Nigerian football. Thank you very much. Yeah. So, guys, check them out. Um, don't forget to like the video. Don't forget to subscribe. And, uh, yeah, more importantly, may the best team win. And, uh yeah. Thanks very much. Enjoy your weekend and enjoy the game, of course. Thank you.